Hi everybody, okay, welcome back. We're looking again at Jeremy Duff's Elements of New Testament Greek, section 3.3. We looked at this in the previous video where I introduced you to the idea of feminine and neuter nouns and some of the patterns that occur in the declensions of the nouns and also of the articles. In this video, I want to look briefly just at a couple of peculiarities of neuter nouns and feminine nouns, which Duff mentions, but which sometimes cause a bit of confusion. First, the slightly easier one, at least the easier one to remember, uh, it's slightly quirky and there's no good reason for it that anybody that I know has been able to identify, but it's right there. Neuter plural nouns take a singular verb. Just pause and think about that for a second. Neuter plural nouns take a singular verb. What normally happens if you have a plural noun as the subject of a sentence? Normally a plural noun as a subject of a sentence needs a plural verb because you're used to the concept of agreement where subjects agree in number with their verbs. So, a sentence like this, hoi and throw poi, plural, the men. Well, what kind of verb are you going to have if that's the subject? You're going to have a plural verb, a third person plural verb. So, akousin, the men are listening, or the men hear, or the men are hearing. Plural verb because you've got a plural noun. However, that's not the case with neuter plural nouns, because here's the little catch line, neuter plural nouns take a singular verb. So tatekna, the children, if you want to say the children are listening, well that'd be a nice thing if the children were listening, the children, tatekna, akue, he is listening. Strange, doesn't match, doesn't agree, because this is singular, third person singular, akuo, akues, akue, third person singular, plural subject but neuter plural nouns take a singular verb almost all the time and a great deal of the time in the New Testament. There's no rationale for this that I can work out, but there's just a rule you'll need to remember. It will become familiar, but it is quite easy to forget actually in practice, uh, despite me saying it's easy to remember. It's easy to learn, but it's easy to forget as well. Neuter plural nouns take a singular verb and watch out because some of the exercises that you're about to come up to in Duff in the next few pages will exploit this and require you to look carefully. So take the opportunity to look at that. Okay, that's the Newton nouns. Now, something slightly more awkward, but again, there's a, there, this isn't too difficult to remember because there is a rationale for this, this time with feminine nouns. In the previous video, we looked briefly at feminine nouns like this. Our care, our ken, our cares, our care, our kai, our cas, our cone, our kais means a beginning and the usual declension, nominative, accusative, genitive, dative in the singular, and then the same thing again in the plural. Kai, kas, kai, na kais. Now, that's the normal ending when the stem of the word ends in a vowel, a consonant that is not an S type consonant. A consonant that doesn't sound like a s sound, like k, has these normal endings. We could call these eta type if you wanted to. Eta type endings are the normal endings when the stem doesn't, when the stem ends in a consonant which doesn't make a s sound. However, there are two variations of this, and Duff notes these, but let me just explain them to you just to remind you. If the stem ends in a a vowel or a row which sounds like a vowel, think of it, er, well that sounds like an er sound, doesn't it? It's, a, uh, it's an extended long sound, so row, uh, like an English R in lots of situations, sounds like and functions like a kind of vowel, for the sake of pronunciation at least. If the stem ends in a vowel or a row, the ending is changed. Instead of having the eta, it has an alpha instead. Now, once you've realized that, that's not too difficult to figure out because the pattern is obvious. A, N, S, A, I, sorry, A, N, S, A. There's no change anywhere else. You just replace the eta with an alpha. However, there is a type of noun which is a mixture of the two. And these are the nouns where the stem ends in a s sound. So these are most consonants. These are vowels or rows. This is when the stem ends in a consonant that makes a s sound. And here what you get is a mixture of the two. Now, 
here's the thing to help you remember it before I show it to you. If, if it ends in a s sound, then you get a mixture. S mixed. Okay, that's easy to remember. The mixed ones are the ones that end in a, where the stem ends in a s sound. So it starts like this. Doxa, doxan. A, uh, an, a, uh, an. But then, doxes. Doxair. Slightly awkward, but you can at least remember them reasonably well. So, the normal air to type, arcare, arcan, arcaes, arcare. The alpha type feminine nouns, where the stem ends in a vowel or a row, hemera, hemeran, hemeras, hemera. And the mixed ones, mixed uh, because the stem ends in a sigma sound, uh, a sa sound, doxa, doxan, dox. Air stocks air, right? So that's just something for you to remember, help you to get to grips with this table. Now, a couple of other tiny notes. First, the article doesn't change. The article doesn't change. So if you were writing the day, for example, it would still be hair hemera, ten hemeran, and so on. You don't change the vowel in here just because you're changing the vowel in the noun. That's important the article remains unchanged. One other thing, I wonder whether you spotted this, this ending has the potential to cause confusion and perhaps a little ambiguity. The genitive singular ending, as, because if you look closely, of course, it's the same as the accusative plural ending. So you just need to watch for that. If the uh, article is present, the article will tell you which one it is. If it's tas hemeras, it's accusative uh, plural. If it's uh, tes hemeras, then it's genitive singular. But you just do just need to watch for that. Uh, and the context, as, as always, will almost always um, make it clear. So you shouldn't have any problems with it. Of course, uh, there's no difference in the plural forms of these endings at all, all of them. I, ass, own, ice. So at least that's something new. You don't have to learn. Okay, so a couple of things to watch out for. There are some exercises right there on page uh, 37. So um, have a go at those. Um, have a go at the ones on the, uh, the next page. And then uh, in the next video, we'll move on and make our way through this chapter. Keep going 20 minutes a day, 30 minutes a day, five or six days a week. If you've had a break over the last couple of weeks, then get back to it. There's no time like the present just to restart and get committed again to what you're doing. And we will have you reading the New Testament in Greek in no time at all. Okay, God bless. See you next time.